It looks like it's 6 o'clock and I'm calling the transportation advisory board meeting on Monday, December 13, 2021 to order. So let's begin with roll call. Sandra Stewart here. Liz Osborne here. Courtney Michelle here. David McInerney here. Steve Liner here. Joe Long. Here. Council Member Yarbrough. May I have a motion to approve our minutes from the November 8th, 2021 tab meeting? I move to approve Courtney. the minutes. Okay, it's been moved by Courtney. Do I have a second? I second. Uh, and seconded by Steve. So um, we've been, uh, do we have any discussion? Okay, everything's okay? okay there was, so there was, hold on. There was, there was one thing I pointed out to Tyler. I don't know if it's been fixed yet. Just simply the location of the underpass should be 21st Avenue instead of first. And that's on page five. Oh, okay. So with that uh, addition, um, May that be reflected in the minutes. Um, and so with that, uh, we've been moved first uh, and um, we've had a second. And then um, if there are no objections with that correction. Uh, our minutes are gonna be approved. I'll say, all in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Aye. Um, Tyler, is there any communication from you or Phil? Just real quick, um, I thought I heard the call-in user say aye. Can, who, who's on the call? I think that's Joe. Uh, Joe. Joe, yeah, okay. Joe Long. All right. Thank you, Joe. Um, you bet. All right. So the, um, I guess I, a couple items from staff. First one is I mentioned it just before the meeting started, but Council Member Yarborough is our new staff liaison. Um, we do anticipate she'll be joining us here a little bit later on. So we thank, thanks to, to, to Mayor Peck and all the service that, that she's given to the community on this board. And we also have a new TAB member who will be joining us next month, was appointed last Tuesday, um, Diane Christ, who called in at a previous meeting and she was appointed to, to fill the vacancy we have there. So expect to see her on the next meeting. Okay. And we'll have a full board for the first time in a little while. So it'll be good to be back to, to full staff and good, good time because we've got work plans and a lot of lot of work to get accomplished with this board. So good good time to be getting the group together so we can chop running. Great. Thank Phil's you. got a couple things to talk about as well. Hey Phil. Now, good evening, members of TAB and, and Chair Member Stewart. Just want to let you know a few things. Um, first of all, we um, are going in front of council tomorrow night and we just we kind of had to move these things forward a little quicker than we had planned, but uh, we want to be ready for 2022 and and tomorrow night our last regular session with council. So what we're trying to do is uh, take the flex intergovernmental agreement, which is the flex bus from Fort Collins down to uh, to Longmont, and it actually goes into Boulder from there. But we're uh, we're renewing that IGA, and usually we take that to our TAB board and. Uh, or TAB is these board, right? Um, but um, we usually take that to you and uh, we apologize that we did not, but we're in, we, we have been pushed along by some scheduling conflicts that have pushed that forward. So if you want any information about the flex and how it works and uh, you know, the ridership over the years, uh, you know, over, obviously the last two years have not been great, um, but there's reasons for that. So we just wanted to let you know kind of what was going on there. So that will be going in front of council. And then tomorrow night also in front of council, which is, again was, um, this was pushed by RTD, is our right free Longmont intergovernmental agreement is going forward to council tomorrow night as well. And again, something we like to usually take to the TAB, but um, RTD was adamant that they get this one really done before uh, January 1st. So we, we worked with them, we pushed it hard and we got it through. And so that's for our attorneys. It's, it's both of these things are fairly administrative, quite frankly, but we do like to take them to you and, 
and just review them with you before we go to council tip typically. Um, but I apologize that we were not able to, but uh, the IGA, both things are, um, you know, fairly straightforward and both things are very positive for the community. So we appreciate your support over the years for these different things. And we'll hope for your support uh, tomorrow night, kind of in, in spirit as we take them to uh, city council. So thanks for your time on that. Any questions? Bill, will you be presenting information to us about the, how much it's costing Ride Free Longmont? Um, we're paying RDD, RTD and how much we're paying for the um, flex ride. I mean, I, I know they're both necessary. I'm just curious to know what um, the cost is to the city of Longmont. Yeah, let me just do that right now and uh, update you. Um, let me throw pull, pull this up. So the flex costs have gone down fairly tremendously just because again, we're, there's that idea that we're supposed to uh, um, pay these things uh, for for full service. And we're not getting, we weren't getting all the service that we were before. So it, um, let me see, I'm trying to find the old payment number, but I can't see it. But this year we are paying a total of $176,992 for that service. And that comes out of a couple different funding sources for us. So um, just to give you a heads up there, that's how much we pay for that service. And then we, that's in a partnership with, you know, city of Boulder, Boulder County, Longmont's part of that, obviously. Um, not Larimer County, but um, Berthet, uh Loveland and Fort Collins. And Fort Collins pays the lion's share of that cost. And they also um, try to go for some, you know, they, they went for some uh, COVID relief funding and got some of that. So we 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 get some of that as part of that uh, total as well. So that's been that's been pretty good for for us. And I'll try to get the uh, I'll try to get the original number for you. Maybe uh, I don't know if Jim has that available, but I'll just kind of throw him uh, throw him under the bus a little bit here, the flex bus this time. Um, and then Ride Free Longmont. We typically pay, this one usually costs us about $500,000 a year. And uh, this year, or in 2022, we're being asked to pay 224668 so about half, half the price, more than half the price discount because of the lack of, of service and really those service hours and RTD just providing a, you know, we actually have a couple new folks at RTD who are, who are a little bit more open to helping out the city on these. So um, that one's gone down quite a bit. We're pretty excited about that. So all these all these dollars have been budgeted in the 2022 budget. Okay. So just to give you a heads up there, I think uh, that flex those flex dollars were ex almost exactly what we had budgeted already. So we knew that price going into um, into mid year 2021. We knew that price. And so it was, it was easy for us to budget that. The RTD dollars were kind of coming at us in late October, early November. So we didn't have a chance to get those in the budget, but luckily they were less, so that worked out. So, but we would have liked to adjust it. So we're spending within our parameters of what we're spending. So those are the two things that I have. And um, I don't know if Ben Ortiz is on the line, but uh, I, well, I see him, he is there, but just to give you a heads up, we're also paying for the, uh, we have an IGA or an intergovernmental agreement with uh, RTD to um, to do buy eco passes. There's Ben to buy eco passes for the city um, staff as well. So a couple of good things going on. It's going to be transit night tomorrow night. So uh, all of these are on consent agenda as well. So you probably won't hear about them until the newspaper the next day if, if they find anything interesting. But we won't be necessarily presenting unless we're asked to do, do so. So that's kind of how that works. And, I guess I'll see Jim. Did we have anything change on that budget item, or did you see anything that changed? I, I don't I have. I think it. we just. We, I think we have to raise the numbers a little bit in accordance with whatever contracts we were running with those with both uh, Flex and with RTD. So to be, ensure we had enough enough budget uh, appropriate. Yeah, I, I don't remember the Flex being a surprise, but RTD was a little different than. We yeah, had that was a little bit different, but uh, we've adjusted, and I think uh, we should have it covered for next year. And then we do the same thing with EcoPass. So Ben, um, if you want to just talk a little bit about how much we spend on EcoPass for employees. 
Oh, sure. Yeah, it's fluctuated quite a bit um, from one year to the next. This year, it's uh, about $23,000. And those, so that's for all the regular benefited full-time and part-time employees. It does not include the police department or the fire department. Um, last year, I believe we spent um, uh, close to $60,000. And then the year before it fluctuated again, I think it was less the year before. So it's been fluctuating up and down. And I think the cost reduction was a result of, um, you know, service reductions um, similar to what's going on with Ride Free Longmont. And how much is it typically for a month long pass on all the different buses? And Oh, sure. So if you wanted to get the equivalent uh, through through passes, you'd have to purchase what is called a regional and airport monthly pass. And so that would be for one employee, $200 a month times 12 months. So you see the, the value in the eco pass, which will really get you unlimited service for the entire year. And so it's, it's part of the city's um, effort to, to, you know, reduce traffic congestion, promote alternative modes, um, promote air quality improvements. Thank you, Ben. Appreciate it. I think that's all we have from our side of things. Oh, lots of questions. Courtney. Um, I'm wondering how, so you said that's full-time and part-time benefited employees. Do you have a number as to how many people actually benefit from that? Yeah, it's, uh, I don't have the exact number, but I believe it's uh, around 730 employees. Oh. And so we have to get an employee roster from the human resources department and send that over to to um, RTD and they they base the contract on that employee roster. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And Liz, you had a question. Thank you. I just wanted to express my appreciation about the flex ride. Um, I've got a son graduating this week from Colorado state and because of flex ride, he was able to live at home for a couple years and it saved him a lot of money and helped him study coming and going. So I just want to say thank you to everyone that makes that possible. That's great. Thank you. Great. That's good to hear. Thank you. Yeah. That's all from yeah. staff. I believe. Great. Thank you. Thank you for both of the reports. All right. Um, so we don't we don't believe there's any um, um, public invited to be heard, correct? I don't see any call-ins, and nobody emailed Tyler. So, okay. All right. I think we're ready for our action items. So uh, I'm gonna. Um, we realize that we need to take some action on these action items this evening. So the first one is um, for the uh, Trans Transportation Advisory Board 2021 Annual Report. And Tyler and you and Phil are gonna be giving the report to us for that. Sure. <clears throat> Chair Stewart, board members, um, don't have a real formal presentation for this tonight, but as one of the one of the duties of this board is to report to council on an annual basis on, on what what did we do? And so each year we, we put together this short report of some of the things that we brought to the board and talked about. Also attached to this is the work plan that we will be discussing next month or next year. But there's a handful of things that we covered this year. Um, one of the big things that this board provides a lot of very valuable input on is the capital improvement program. Um, we have opportunities to update with both current year and then get recommendations for upcoming years for the CIP. We bring information from RTD and talk about high crashes. And there were a handful of other work items we had this year. The carbon free transportation roadmap was very early in the year. And that was one that TAB made some recommendations that I was for adoption on as well. So with that, I don't have a whole lot more to talk about unless there's anything on here that that I missed, or you think that we should also include in this report before it goes to the council to say we did that. I did unfortunately catch a, a, a typo in the, the comm that I'll take care of and correct. So date error in there, but I take care of that. So with that, any discussion and, and we are looking for an action to, to recommend the council the, the work. David. 
Tyler, are the things included in the tab annual report only um, activities from your tab work plan for the year? Or do, should it include other presentations as well? Um, it's generally relatively brief, but I'm happy to include other other information if it's. If yeah, it's well, it just occurred to me that um, Boulder County staff presented the State Highway 119 bikeway and greenway design to the board at our uh, September meeting. Okay. You might want to add that. Yeah. Catch. I'll add that. Any other discussion? Okay. Um, we need to have a motion because we are we are um, approving your report, right, Tyler? So, yes. Liz? I move that we approve the report. Is there a second? Courtney? Okay. Moved and seconded that the uh, report be approved with the addition of uh, the 119 county um, presentation. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Okay. So, five um, in favor and one opposed. Okay, thank you. So the second one is that we need an action item on is the safety, traffic safety fund. And Phil's gonna make that presentation. Yeah, thank you, Chair and members of the board. Just another maybe quick item here to talk about um, the tra traffic safety fund. And we wanted to bring this in front of the TAB before we go to council next year to kind of talk about re renewing this idea of um, collecting this, this uh, fee that's on moving violation tickets. And so in 2014, the city council passed an ordinance where we did uh, $10 surcharges on certain types of moving violations. And what we found out is that people could easily plea their way out of some of those moving violations to be lesser violations. And, uh, and, the, and, and some of the judges were more than happy to get them from paying our fee. So that was, that was interesting. So um, in 2017, we went back up at the recommendation of some of the judges, quite frankly, and said, Let's reduce the fee to $5 per charge, but make it on all moving violations so that you can't really, you know, uh, kind of get out of this too easily without uh, a lot of work. So uh, we did want people to pay into the traffic safety fund if they had a moving violation where they were being unsafe, right? So there's, there's, there's that's kind of the nexus of these two things. And so um, we have been collecting money and I wanted to just kind of really quickly uh, help understand this chart that is in the, in, the, in the packet tonight because it does not equate. So you can't just take the money that was the revenues and pull out what was spent and come up with that total because there's a lot of different things. The fund balance is basically other things go into it that aren't included in the fee only collection. So, um, and we should have, we, we, we went through it and we should, you know, all the fee only collections should always be a, uh, some number according, you know, should be divisible by 10 or, or evenly divisible by 10 or five after 2017. So you'll see that last one here in 2020 is 12,924 is what we collected. And so somebody was able to kind of, you know, based on what they could pay, um, they scaled down all the different ones we found. we. Tyler found this one, so I appreciate Tyler's help in kind of helping find these. But um, there are some anomalies like that that we have to go through. But we just wanted to let you know that these these dollars are typically spent on. We have one employee with the city who is now currently she went from part time, and you've met her, Lauren Lauren Greenfield, mm -hmm. is our traffic safety coordinator, mm -hmm. and so she gets paid out of this out of this fund, and she does rides with people, group rides, uh, usually. Um, twice a week and she's still doing it because it's such a nice it's been such a nice late fall here so she's still doing them 
and she does them as long as she can as the weather holds out. But she'll take people, you know, groups on rides, and she'll kind of talk to them before they start riding about what they need to do to their bicycles to be safe, and then how to bicycle safely uh, on our Longmont streets and on our Longmont trails. So we've done that. We've also had um, some training courses really more geared toward drivers. So it's called Bicycle Friendly Driving Courses. And those have been really popular, and I think people have learned a lot. And so those are kind of co-sponsored by Bicycle Colorado, and they're more than happy to come here. So we have them come in and, and present to, they've actually presented to our city staff. And then there was a number of times during the summer where we had classes for anybody who wanted to participate in the city. So there's citywide classes as well. So just to let you know a couple of things that happened there. And then the supplies, uh, we bought um, a number of bells and helmets and lights for folks who can't afford them or, you know, who come to these, uh, we, we have these fairs throughout the summer. Of course, it was much more popular pre-COVID, but, uh, um, uh, and we did have some issues in 2020, but we restarted it in 2021 where we buy helmets for the police department to give out to folks. We also um, buy them lights to give out to folks. And then we give, we typically give out lights and, and helmets and bells too to folks at different events. So that's been really popular uh, to get to get those things out to people who may not necessarily know that you're supposed to have a light on your bike, you know, or two lights on your bike if you can. Uh, and the bells help as you're passing people, uh, make make it more safe and those kind of things. And obviously helmets, uh, you know, especially for children. There, we've seen a lot of children in, in the city who, uh, you know, their parents don't don't want to or can't afford the, the, the helmet. And we really try to steer them, steer people toward the idea that a helmet is a, is, is like wearing a seatbelt in a car. You really should do it every time you get a chance because, you know, your head is pretty valuable, you know? So we gotta, we wanna make sure people understand that. So those are some of the things we bought over the years. We also, um, there's also some purchases for Zagster. We, we, we funded Zagster out of this, uh, out of this fund as well, because it was a safer way. I mean, we had bikes that were um, well-maintained at the time and had lights and had bells and it was, it was like a bicycle rental program. So we, we felt like that was, part of the safety issue of uh, keeping people safe was to uh, give give them a good bicycle that they could ride for fairly inexpensive amounts of, of uh, you know, it, it wasn't very expensive to rent these bicycles. And unfortunately that program kind of dissolved in the first part of 2020 uh, and COVID was just kind of the last straw for that. So we couldn't, we couldn't keep them going uh, for that. But uh, um, again, those are some of the things we've, one last thing is we have funded police overtime to patrol uh, high speed locations or places where we get high complaints. So we've had, we have in the past uh, funded the overtime for those patrols because, um, you know, when we, when we ask the police to go to a certain location and, and really target um, that goes kind of above and beyond what they're trying to do on a typical day. So they can do it, but they need the overtime dollars to help, um, target a certain area. Otherwise, they just need to do their uh, typical traffic um, um, watches and, and, the, and the traffic monitoring that they do. So those are just a few things that we've done with this fund. And so we feel like it's pretty valuable. Again, um, trying to see if I missed anything here, but uh, um, we've also offset the cost of traffic safety classes at the rec center. Uh, that was kind of early on when, when Lauren was part-time and not and right now she's half time, so we do get more of Lauren's time now than we did before, which is, is which is nice. And so um, those are just some of the things we're doing. And so the, I guess, uh, you know, we we uh, we estimate that the traffic safety coordinator last year uh, made contact with four to five hundred people, you know, just in going out to these different events and running different things and talking to people on bike rides and. Uh, doing different outreach events. So um, we think that's pretty good. I mean, it could have been better, I think, if we weren't in the COVID atmosphere that we are, but that's kind of the way it is. Um, and other than that, I think I've covered everything that we try to purchase with this fund. We're doing, we're staying within our budget. We're staying within those fund balances. So we're, we're proud of that. But uh, I think there are some things that we can do better. So we'll start to look at some of those things. And we'd certainly take your recommendations if you had some ideas of how 
uh, the traffic safety fund could be better used uh, kind of more citywide. And with that, we'd, we'd, we'd ask the TAB to recommend to city council that they, um, that they consider continuing the surcharge beyond the current end date of June 30th, 2022. And so this probably won't go up to council until February or March, but we just wanted to get it in front of you early and ask for your recommendation if you have one. So thank you. And you don't need to, if you don't feel like you are comfortable with that, uh, that's your prerogative as a board. You can say, uh, you know, we're not comfortable recommending this forward and we'll just let council know that as we move it forward because staff will be making that recommendation to city council, but we would, we would like to have the TAB recommendation as well because that goes a long way and council really appreciates this board as far as, um, you know, your recommendations and, and how you think through these different uh, these different issues. So thank you very much for your time and I'll turn it over to the chair. Thank you, Phil. Um, is there any discussions? Anybody has any questions to ask Phil? Yes, Courtney. Um, I'm wondering about how the helmets and lights and bells get distributed and is, are there any left over? Uh, could we do more of that? Is there like a way people apply for it or is it only at an event or how does that work? Like, could we do more with that kind of thing? Well, That's I'll just start the, the making your making your writing safer. Yeah, board member Michelle, that's that's a good point, and I think we've been we've been hamstring strong a little bit this year, just not being able to get out to the events that we usually do. I mean, typically we would have been out at the um, holiday parade or the winter parade the other day, and we hand out lights just for pedestrian safety. Mm -hmm. So we give out the, the bike lights, but also say that they're good for pedestrian safety as well. And we just didn't want to make those contacts because we know people are sensitive to that right now. And, uh, you know, we have our um, Rhythm of the River was a really great event for us. We could give out a lot of helmets at that event uh, with the police. And again, we've been, we've, we've been hampered a little bit by the idea that um, we haven't been able to do those uh, outreach events as much as we used to but you're right we quite frankly we have a lot of lights sitting in just down down the hallway from my office quite frankly and there's a big bag of them we'd like to get more out uh, i know lauren has actually approached people as she's writing who don't have lights and offered them lights or if they don't have a helmet she she talks about where you know come by the office and we'll get you a helmet so we could do a better job we we do depend on the police department quite a bit to help us with that distribution and that's been lacking a little bit just because they've lost a lot of personnel um just to 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 uh to the great uh, resignation i guess here as well so um we've lost some lost some police folks we've had some uh, we've lost some of our contacts on that so we need to reestablish that as well so we're not we're not doing our best job but we'll we'll, we'll, we'll work on it is there um any partnership with like Bicycle Long Lawn or the group that does the Wednesday night rides or anything like that? That's a great idea. We'll reach out to those folks. We all we know we all know them personally, so we can reach out to those folks and and find out if there's any desire to uh to, for, for that. So that's a great okay. idea. Sometimes they do like a holiday drive and they donate bikes and pick or fix them up and hand them out and could they also give a helmet and a light and a along that right. like with what they're doing, we could Donate to them. Yeah, we just have to be very careful because there's a stipulation in the original ordinance that really is about, and I'll go back to it here. It's about oh, yeah, not, no money from the not. surcharge can go to programs outside the city control. So we can't really, if we give them to bicycle Longmont, there's an issue of, and this this is kind of a previous council's issue is, you know, we don't want to just give this money or these these items to people and not really have control over. Um, how they get distributed. So we have to be a little careful about that. But I think if the city staff were to do it at these events, that would be fine. Like if we knew an event that they're hosting and we go have a table or something then and hand right. it. We know, those, we know when those Wednesday night rides start every time. Yeah. And we know where they start from. And so it would be pretty easy for us to uh, to work a little harder and get those bells and, and, uh, and lights out to folks. The helmets are a little different because we really are trying to get those out to children. Mm -hmm. Understanding that you know adults uh, might have more more ability to get these helmets. I mean, we really buy the child sized child child sized helmets first, 
and we buy a few adult ones, but we really try to get them on the children to get it kind of going at a younger age. So there's an expectation that you should wear a helmet. Great, thank you. And we don't want to penalize children because they can't buy them. Right, right, right. good. Any other questions, David? Yes, um, Phil, everything you've described and all of the programs and activities uh, that are described in the those bullet lists in the uh, update that was in our packet all seem really worthwhile to me. And uh, I would encourage us as a board to get behind this and recommend to council that this um, traffic safety fund should be carried forward. What, what other members of the board think about that? I agree. Well, I, agree. I, I wanted to have the discussion and then see if someone wants, someone wants to make a motion. So. Is there any more discussion? Okay, David, would you like to make a motion? Yes, I move that uh, have recommend that the traffic safety fund program be advanced to future years. Phil, are you looking for, uh, Steve, Steve seconds it. Thank you. Are you looking <laughs> for another five years or, or is that what you're presenting no, or I'm hoping? Just, uh, yeah, and, 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 and Chair Stewart, that's something that we can discuss as well. If you think this maybe should be a 10 year or something like that, or, I mean, I was going to recommend five year just because that seems to be what the, the council likes to, you know, each council, um, you know, five year increment kind of touches a number of councils, whereas a 10 year increment might skip a couple of councils and give them some, some uh, say, I guess, as to how this moves forward. But that's a great point. I mean, we talk about, you know, what's the point of coming every five years if it's just something we kind of all agree should move forward. But um, we'd like to hear from you on that. Do, do, do we foresee any changes in moving violations, amounts, and that sort of thing that would have us maybe look at this in a shorter time frame to be able to make changes as opposed to going to five or 10 years? Does that make sense, what I'm asking? Well, I think we, we always assume that moving violations are going to go up with population, right? And with more traffic on our roads. So, um, but it does, enforcement's a big, big issue. And so how many officers are there, are there out there that are available to do enforcement is also another issue. So um, all these things. I we know if we could see an increase, just, you know, increase the amount by a certain, you know, uh, almost stepped it up. But I, yeah. I understand that it had to go from 10 to 5 because people were getting out of it. So. <clears throat> But I also understand that this is a report that could come to the tap every year because we need to hear what's going on there. Good idea. As far <laughs> as um, how many people you've touched. I mean, Lauren and Ben both, I think, work on this newsletter, and I, I'm sure it doesn't cost any dollars other than staff time, but it comes out and it's free and it has wonderful information for um, people that like to cycle or that are novice. Um, you know, just things to think about that maybe you hadn't considered being a, a bicyclist or a pedestrian. So I, I think it would be good that we would find out about this, you know, yearly, whether we're asked to, um, in, in, you know, increase fees or whatever. I just think it's good information for us. As board a, member uh, and, board. And, 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 and Chair Stewart, you know, that's, that's a great point to bring this every year so that we're very clear about you know, are we in trouble with the dollars? Are we spending more than what we have and mm -hmm. those kind of things? Are we, are we tracking pretty well, which I can, I think we can say we're tracking pretty well right now. So um, yeah, next year we would come before this board and give you another report and let you know if, if there are changes that we might need because of the fact that we're not kind of making the amount of dollar, the amount of funding we need to kind of keep this fun whole, I guess. Okay. Is there anything, uh, yeah. So, Steve. I, just last question. Is there any that, that you know of uh, maybe state matching funds that might work uh, in conjunction with this that, that we might be able to leverage? That's a good question because we could, we could see if we have any grants that we could go after for safety dollars and then use this. I think this fund would be very appropriate to use for safety dollars from the state and be able to leverage the dollars. So you, we could do that for... You know, maybe more project specific item. 
Yeah, I didn't know if Dr. Cog or if it would be at, at you know, um, C dot level or what have you, but I would think that if we could find some, you know, possible funds to add to this, because this is a very worthwhile program, I'd like to see it expand. <clears throat> I think we would go after state dollars with this one just because uh, we don't want to federalize the dollars. <laughs> right, exactly. Federalizing the dollars, I yep. mean, we would, that makes it, we have to go for something over a million dollars basically to make it worth our administrative while. So, um, yeah, so but state dollars would be a great idea and, you know, typically a 20% to 50% match and then uh, we could see what we could do with that. That's great. Great idea. So, Liz, did you have a question? Okay. So, David, you had a question comment. Uh, yes, Phil, will your staff recommend recommendation to council be to continue. The $5 surcharge for all moving violations for an additional 5 years. Correct. We'll just keep we'll keep it kind of as is for another five years. Okay. So you're that was making thought. Pardon me. So you're making that motion, David. That's the motion you made. Yes, I would move that um, tab supports staff's recommendation for continuation of the traffic safety fund program. Okay. Steve, did you second it, or am I putting words in your mouth? I will. <laughs> I, I second that. I don't mean to do that. <laughs> no, it's fine. I'm sorry. No, okay. you're fine. I think you did raise your hand. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It's been moved and seconded. All those, any discussion, any more discussion? Okay. Uh, the only thing I would like to add is yes. could we add, could we uh, be on the, um, the recommendation to city council? Can we add something in there that we review yearly? Um, and the addition of looking at possible matching funds through state. As as part of this, do we need to add that? Is that good with everybody? David, is that good with your original motion? Sure, I can accept that. Okay. okay. All right. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. I think everybody said aye. All right. Thank you. That was a great report. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time tonight. We really, really appreciate your acts on this. Okay, so now we're ready for the information item, Tyler and Phil, on uh, the 22 uh, proposed 2022 proposed tab work plan. Chair Stewart, members of the board, um, this one looks a lot like our previous work plan, but it has been updated. <coughs> excuse me, with some new work items. Um, Fortunately, we do have an annual program review line in here for the TSF fund, so glad to have that on, on the proposed work plan already. I think, again, one of the things that I stress, I think the board really is a big contributor in terms of the, the annual CIP is one of the big work items that this board weighs in on. And there's a handful of other things in here that, that we bring to the board each year for updates, information, action. I think one of the things we'd like to do in the upcoming year is bring staff in from Flex. I know that, that you've all heard from staff from OTD in the past, but I think it would be a worthwhile effort to, to maybe see how Flex runs and operates and thinks about transit and how that might compare to what we see from RTD. So probably a good discussion to have with the board and, and with Flex. And then I would encourage the board to, this is discussion, right? So next, next month when we bring this back, we'd be making adopting the annual work plan. So de definitely open to, to change if there's things in here that's missing. If the board wants to focus on other big work items that please let me know, take some time, review it. Um, from a master planning big picture item next year, staff doesn't anticipate we'll be updating the, the comprehensive plan. So we'll see an update to Envision Longmont. And with that, an update to the roadway plan. So that'll be a, another big work item that we'll be asking the board for recommendations and feedback on as we go through that process. So definitely, um, again, I said, look, it looks a lot like previous years. It looks very similar, but there's definitely a lot in that. And, and we don't necessarily get to everything that's on the work plan either. So um, with that, Phil, if you have anything else you want to add? I think, I think that covers it. Thank you. Are there any questions? that you want to ask Tyler or, or Phil this evening about this? Because we will be talking about this next month. Correct, Tyler? We're going to review it next yeah, month yeah. again. My, my intent is to bring it back next month as an action item. And then okay. we'll have the 
we'll have the full board next month. So the whole board can, can weigh in on the work plan. And, and then you all have some time to think about it. So I guess I would ask if you have any, I, I don't need answers or final final comments right now, but in the next couple of weeks, if you have things or think of things that you want to try to get in here, please let me know and I'll, I'll get it updated before the next meeting. Okay. Courtney, were you gonna ask a question? No, okay. Does anyone have any questions? Okay. All right, well, we look, forward to uh, discussing this further next month. And if you do have any questions or as Tyler said, any um, input for him, you'll shoot him an email before our next board meeting. Okay. All right. I think we're ready for comments from our board members and Courtney, do you have any comments? Nothing transportation related, just happy holidays, everyone, and let's look forward to 2022 and hope it's better. <laughs> Thank you. Steve? You um, yeah, just want to thank Phil and Tyler for, I know you, you guys work a lot of hours and to sit through this and go over the things that, that you and the department are working on are, are really, really important to, to get the eyes on. So I appreciate you guys' work on this. and. Uh, just like Courtney said, happy holidays, everybody. Thank you. David? Um, I also want to thank staff for the presentations this evening. They were very uh, informative. Thank you. Liz? I'll just say ditto to what everybody else said. Thank you. Joe? Ditto, and everybody have a wonderful holiday as well and i i agree with everybody you, you've all done a great presentation and uh, the information you provided is always we need to hear and uh, we appreciate you allowing us to um, give our input and uh, take it to heart and um, thank you and I, I do wish everybody a happy holiday all right uh did uh, our new um councilman Council member Yarbrough, did she ever come on the phone? Have we heard from her? Gosh, we might be done before she calls in. Does someone want to let her know we're closing up? I can send an email for sure. Okay. Okay. I know you you guys work all the time. So you if we get done early, you you have an opportunity to be off for the evening. So that would be good news, would it not? Great present, right? Have her okay, David. phone number. And, and Phil, when you send that email, uh, please convey our welcome to uh, Council Member Yarborough. And I'll text her right now. I have her cell phone number because I know her too. So I'll I'll text her and just say like, we're wrapping up. Don't worry about it. <laughs> and we look forward to uh, meeting with her in, in January. Certainly. Okay. okay. Um, Anybody else have, oh, is there any information or upcoming transportation related meetings that we need to know about from either one of you, Bill or Tyler? Nope. I have any on the agenda right now. Okay. So we'll be dealing with the 22, 2022 work plan in January, probably along with other things. So do I have a motion for uh, adjournment? Uh, I move that we uh, adjourn tonight's uh, tab meeting. Okay, Steve moved. Uh, is there a second? David? Second. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 All right, we're done. Thank you. <laughs> All right. We'll Great see you next one. month. <laughs> Have a great holiday. Happy New Year. Thank you. Be safe, too. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye.